Mike Taylor steps up to the plate with two outs and the bases loaded here in the bottom of the ninth. This is the cherished high school World Series, and the Jefferson Bobcats are losing by three runs. The pitcher is set, Taylor is set, and the pitch. It is hit. Oh, my, what a hit. I've never seen anything like that in my life. It is going. It is going. It is gone. It is out of the stadium for a grand slam home run by Mike Taylor in the bottom of the ninth, winning the game for the Jefferson Bobcats. Mike rounds the bases, and the fans go wild. Mike Taylor is now being greeted by starting pitcher Chris Saunders. And here it is, folks, the prize trophy being awarded to the most valuable player, Mike Taylor. We warm up a little. Yeah, let's keep his arms going. You know, Chris, if, if I was the coach, I would have kicked you off the team, man. Well, if that were the case, I'm glad you're not our coach. Here we are, seniors in high school, and you get the opportunity of being starting pitcher for Friday night's opener, and you turn it down. I, I just don't understand. Mike, listen to me. You know I'm honored to be pitching the Friday night's game, but I still have my conflicts with the Sabbath. Well, couldn't you get, like, permission from your priest or something? Dude, you know Seventh-day Adventists don't have priests. Nah, I'm just giving you a hard time. But you're probably the only pitcher who could beat the fair few fireballs. I mean, you won our only game last year in the semifinals before they knocked us out three games straight. Speaking of which... Hey, Chris. Hi. Hey. I heard you're off to pitch the Bobcats help opener this Friday night. Congratulations. Yeah, well, he turned it down. What? You're not going to pitch Friday night? Oh, yeah, it's a religion, isn't it? Okay, we need to get something straight here. The decision not to play this Friday night is my choice. Just because I'm a Seventh-day Adventist isn't the only reason I'm not going to pitch this game. It's more than being an Adventist. It's my personal relationship with Christ. Wake up to reality, Chris. This is your chance to become a superhero by shutting out last year's top-ranked fireballs and you're turning it down because you believe in God. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Mike. Hi, Chris. What Hi, are you guys Chris. talking about? Talking about how Chris is giving up his pitch pitching position Friday night. Oh, I heard that you were asked to pitch this Friday night, and I'm so proud of you for turning it down, Chris. We all know that the Bible clearly states in, Gen in Exodus 20.10 that the Sabbath is holy and is to be spent with God and not out playing a baseball game. Trish, all you ever do is preach and I'm getting sick of listening to it. I'm not preaching at you. It's, I just want you to understand that your eternal life is at stake here. And if you don't turn to Christ and obey his commandments, then you'll be lost. You're the one that's lost something, Trish, your brain. Come on, Mike, let's leave. I'm beginning to feel a little hot with a halo in my presence. Well, I'll see you guys later. And you might want to reconsider your decision about Friday night. Thanks for your concern, Mike. I do appreciate it, but at least someone else will be made happy by getting the starting nod. Yeah. Tammy, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, but please think about what I said. See you guys later. Hey, do you want to come with me this Sabbath afternoon for a Bible study at Elder Sterling's home? It's from 1 to 7. A six-hour Bible study at Elder Sterling's home? Yeah, that's right. I wanted it to be an eight-hour Bible study, but Elder Sterling has to get to the church for an elder's dinner. Now, was Elder Sterling the elder that always gave the nine-minute kneeling prayers in church? 
Yeah, that's him. Is there anything wrong with his nine-minute prayers? No, I didn't say there was, but I'll be visiting my grandmother in Friendship Manor around 4 o'clock, so um, yeah. I don't think I can make it. Well, sure you can. You can come from 1 to 345 and still be able to see your grandma by 4. Hey, Chris. Hey, Trish. Hi. Hey, you want to play a game of miniature golf with me this Saturday? Jenny, how can you ask something like that? You know that Saturday is holy, according to the Bible, and miniature golf is not a Sabbath activity. Besides, Chris and I are going to a Bible study this Sabbath afternoon. Maybe you should come and receive a spiritual blessing with us. Are you implying that I need to be blessed by coming with you to your Sabbath study? Which, I might add, is the only excitement you have on your day of worship. You, you will be more blessed by coming to our Bible study than, than hitting colored balls into little round holes. Well, at least I won't fall asleep on the golf course. Hey, you two. We only have a minute how till class. Better hurry. Jenny, please think about what I said about the Sabbath and, and call me if you're interested, okay? See ya. Hey, Tanya, you better run. The class has just started. Tanya, are you okay? <laughs> My whole life's falling apart, and it's all stupid Gary's fault. Your boyfriend? My ex-boyfriend, as of a few minutes ago. I'm I... sorry. I'm not. I can't believe I let the jerk use me. <laughs> I loved him so much. I thought we had something special. How could he do this to me? Would you like to talk about it? I can't talk to you about it. You'd be ashamed of me. I could never be ashamed of you. You're a good friend and I want to be there if you need me. I don't know how to say this. I, I'm pregnant. I only told him so he could help me. And he said it's my problem and he wants nothing to do with it or me. How could he do this to me? I'm sorry, I, I really am. I don't know what to do. I don't know who to talk to. And if my parents ever find out, they'll kill me. What am I supposed to do? If you would like, we could go see a counselor, and she may be able to help you out, at least someone else to talk to. Thanks, Chris. I didn't think there were any decent men left on this planet. I guess I was wrong. Now remember, Cloud, it is important to realize the importance of being
hot spirit working on the paper and turn it in tomorrow. You may work with a friend should you desire, class. So, Mike, what are you going to write about? Hey, Mike, I know what you can write about. Why don't you write about that time when we were 12 and you stole that ice cream from Old Man Cranberry's ice cream truck? I remember that. So funny when he came out and saw us. We was getting a lot of trouble. Yeah, did we ever. Mike, why don't we just write about the first time we got together? That's a lot more meaningful than writing about melting dreams. Or I know. How about that time we went mine exploring and you fell down that big long shaft and broke your arm? I remember that. I was watching him. Mike, like, let's just finish the assignment so we can leave. Alright, well, I'll talk to you later, dude. Yeah. Hey, sis. Oh, this is my long lost brother. Oh, your long lost brother. What are you writing about? Oh, an experience like the teacher said. Well, come on, tell me, what experience? Well, about when I became a Christian. You know, I used to think you were pretty crazy when you got all this religious ideas from Chris. But you've turned out to be a pretty cool sister. Okay. Anyway, you gotta help me. Help me figure out what I'm gonna write about. Well, let's see. You could write about the time <laughs> you stole into Mr. Cooper's hen house, took his egg, and he met his dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was mad. I can still remember how mad old man Cooper was. <laughs> he thought Mike did it. Hey, did I hear my name? It's over here. You an old man Cooper? I still think you told him I did it. Come on. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. I think I'm gonna use that. Alright. Good luck on your paper, okay? Well, thanks. Hey, 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 Oh, Mike, wait for me in the car. I have something I have to go do. What do you have to do? What do you have to know? I'm just wondering. Well, just wait in the car and quit asking questions. All right. Dude, do you always let her talk to you like that? I'm kind of used to it. Man, if she were my girlfriend, I would have super glued her lips together a long time ago. <laughs> hey, you ready for the game Friday night? Yeah, I think so. I've been daydreaming about it in class all Look, day. Dreaming ain't gonna help your field performance. True, but it is helping me get through my classes. Hey, could I get you ride home with you today? Yeah, sure. All right, thanks. No Appreciate it. Mike, I need yeah. you to take me to the mall. Um, well, what about Dave? Like, I just promised him a ride home, and the mall's opposite direction. Well, do we have to be a taxi everywhere? You can go with someone else. Besides, we need to get to the mall right away. And if we hurry, you and I can spend some time alone together. Don't worry about it, Mike. I'll find another way home. All right. Hey, how about I give you a call tonight sometime? What time do you think? I don't know, about 9.30 or so? All right. All right. I'll see you later. Man. All right. Oh, whoa. I want to tell you about this new chick I met at school today. All right. Great. All right. See you. Begonia, I need to get some money from you to buy this new dress I wanted for a long time. I love it. Uh, new dress? Mike, look at the royal blue and the lace and you love these things. And, and the, the sequins, I love the sequins and the green and the red and the black and everything. Oh, Mike, give me some money. Fifty? You give me fifty? This isn't enough. What do you think we're shopping? Kmart? You can't find anything in sacks for fifty. Look, Mike, all of these things and the mink coat. I want this mink coat. Mike, give me some more. kind of dumped for that bag of his, Tammy. You know what's amazing is Mike's baseball performance would probably get him any girl on this whole campus, but he chooses Tammy. I think it's the other way around. I think Tammy chose him. What do you mean? 
Well, Mike, he's never had a girlfriend before. And then when Tammy took interest in him, he kind of just jumped at the opportunity. I think he knew that she was kind of, kind of strange. I think he thought he could kind of help her or something. You don't like her either, do you? Who does? Definitely not me. She was so self-centered and so conceited. Poor Mike. Yeah. Speaking of Mike, are you going to be going to the game Friday night? You bet. You know what I hear? It's Sunday night's party is going to be the highlight of the weekend. Oh, yeah, it's at Brian's yeah, house, right? Yeah, you know it's going to be good at you Brian's house. You know it. <laughs> it's a crazy party. <laughs> Excuse me, Chris, you think maybe next time you can watch where you're going? Jan and Gus for us to get there so often nowadays. Guys are much too kind to play me with your presents. Oh, I didn't realize like it bothered you so much. Yeah, well, next time I'll try to make you more obvious. I'm really sorry, Jenny. I didn't mean to offend you. Oh, I think I'll live. Oh, okay, Jenny. God bless you. That girl really grates on my nerves. I noticed. So, are you going to be going to the party or not? I might. How about you? Me? Miss a party at Brian's? Come on. Never mind. Forget I have. Come on, give a little. Sure, why not? As long as the lights in the party's gonna be. Hey, that's me. <laughs> Ooh, sounds like a proposal to me. Hey, Chris, you got our English test graded yet? I'm working on them right now, but I haven't graded yours yet. Besides, the teacher wants to double check them anyways. Okay, later. Hey, Gary. Yeah? Do you have a minute? Sure, what's up? I talked to Tanya today. <laughs> a little witch. What's she gonna do? Make a public announcement? Gary, she just talked with me because she needed someone to talk to. She said you wouldn't talk with her, and when you found out she was pregnant, you just broke up with her. We were having problems before she got herself pregnant. Don't you feel you have some responsibility for this situation? It's your baby, too. Listen, Chris, I don't have time to take care of problems of hers like this. Besides, it's her own fault for not taking birth control. You're just as responsible as she is. She really needs you, and you should be there for her. Hey, Chris, you're a nice guy and everything. But I don't want to discuss this with you. You know, it's none of your business. I gotta go. Later. What's the deal copping out on us on Friday night? Brian, you've known about my religious conflicts. Listen, Chris, you're our best pitcher and we don't stand a chance of getting into fireballs this Friday night unless you're pitching. Why don't you think about, your, about the team instead of thinking about yourself for once? I do think about the team, but God is more important in my life. I'm still going to be playing Sunday night against the Wolverines. I just cannot play on Friday night. But the Wolverines are easy to beat. Any of our pitchers can beat them. We need you, Chris. Can't you understand that? I do understand that, Brian, but you have to understand my position, too. I love baseball, and I join the team with you and everyone else, knowing that I can't pitch on Friday night or Saturday. All I know is that if we lose this Friday night, it's all your fault. Hi, Coach Connors. Hi, Tricia. What can I do for you? Well, I got this great idea on how to improve your baseball team, and I wanted to share it with you. Oh, I'm always open for a good suggestion. What is it? Well, I figured that if you put just one hour before each game with your teammates to have a Bible study and a prayer session, then not only would they improve out on the field, but they'd also improve on their personal lives. The players will be drawn closer together. I could even lead the study for you. What do you think? I'm sorry, but I don't think it'll work for us. Of course it will work. I've been doing a lot of praying about this. And I was impressed to share this with you. As I said before, I don't think it'll work for our team or the players. I'm sorry, Coach Connors, but you're wrong. Don't you see? God wants this, especially now in this day of sin and sex and especially the terrible rock music kids listen to. I listen to that music all the time. I know, and look how you turned out. Hi, Coach. Hi, Trish. Hi, Chris. Boy, am I glad to see you. You can help me convince Coach here to have a baseball Bible study prayer group. Trish, do you think I could talk to Coach alone for a few minutes? Oh, sure. I have to go anyways. I'm having a Bible study with my six-year-old neighbor. See ya. Thanks, Chris.
No problem. I, she's a really nice person. She's just really persistent some of the time. Do you have a few minutes to talk? Yeah, sure. What's up? There's a problem that I think you forgot about. What's that? Well, remember last year when I signed the agreement saying that I wouldn't be able to play on Friday nights or Saturdays because of my beliefs? Just recently I was looking at the schedule and I noticed you had me starting pitching for Friday night's game. Well, actually I didn't forget. I was just hoping that you could make an exception in this case. You have quality pitching ability and you're our biggest weapon against last year's champions. Yeah, I understand your viewpoint, but you also have to look at it from my angle. Because of my beliefs, I will not be able to do this because if I did go against them, then it, it would go against everything I stand for. I understand. I respect your beliefs. Well, I guess you know our only other option is to have you pitch Sunday against the Wolverines. That'd be no problem at all. As long as you can tell the team, especially like Brian, that this isn't anything personal. It's just something that that I have to stand for, and I don't want them to to be enemies with me. Sure, I'll remind them of our agreement and your loyalty to the team. Well, get in shape for next Sunday's game. I'll play it 100 percent, sir. Thanks. Get out here and take Trish with you. He wasn't upset at me, but he did say that Brian is upset for the game being lost. It must be hard to uphold your Christian belief on a public campus. Yeah, it is, especially if I didn't have Christ in my life. But he helps me through it. With Brian, on the other hand, though, it really upsets me because he doesn't take religion seriously. And he blames me for not being at the game even though he knows religion is the most important thing in my life. That's what made me become a Christian, was your example. You uphold your beliefs. You don't lose your temper, and you're so patient. I really appreciate that. But I used to lose my temper a lot. When I was little, I'd get in arguments with my teachers, officials. One time, I was even kicked out of a Little League championship game because of my temper. <laughs> Yet I've learned a lot from it, and God's helped me a lot in prayer. Oh, to be a Christian like you would be so nice. And you are a Christian. You just you need to be one in your own unique way. You treat me so special. You deserve to be treated well. You're really special in me. Thanks. Would you like to get through the waterfall? Sure. something I've, I've really prayed about a long time, and I was wondering, would you be my girlfriend? Oh, 
if you feel any pressure at all, if you don't think the time is right, just, just let me know. Well, it's just that I was so, I'm surprised that you asked me. I'd love to be. Would you like to pray about it? That would be nice. Dear Lord, we come together today to ask you to help Sonia and I in our relationship to come closer together. Also to come closer together with you. We ask for your strength and guidance. In your name, amen. Shall we seal it with a hug? Race you back. Sonia, are you okay? I think I made a sprained my ankle really bad. We better get you home. Did you take Sonia to the hospital after she hurt herself? Yeah, we had to take her into the emergency room because she fractured her ankle. Oh no. Is she going to be at tonight's game? No, she's not going to be able to make it, but she'll be listening on the radio. You have yourself a shy but very nice looking woman. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> well, tonight's your night to show them you got major league talent. There's going to be some scouts in the audience. No way. Yeah, they're, they're going to come to Friday night's game and heard you're going to be here today, so they're here. They showed up. Wow. But if you guys keep making such a big deal about this, I'll probably walk the first 10 batters or so and be thrown out of the game. Ah, nonsense. The worst you could do is give up two singles in one inning. No, no, bad for Chris who's messing up our team by not playing on Friday nights when we need him most. Hey, lighten up a little bit, you know? I mean, <laughs> at least you know where I stand, all right? Dude, let's get out of here. Yeah. We head now to the top of the ninth as pitcher Chris Saunders tries for a perfect game. Saunders has retired all 24 batters he has faced thus far. And now for the ninth inning play-by-play, -play, we turn it over to none other than Bob Withers. Thank you, Jerry. Kyle Sims steps up to the plate. Kyle struck out in the third inning, fouled out in the sixth, and now faces Chris Saunders, who has pitched an outstanding game. Sims is ready. Saunders winds, and the pitch to Sims is a fastball swung on and fouled back. You know, Bob, Chris Saunders has got to be the best pitcher the Jefferson Bobcats have ever had. Last season, he ranked second in all high school competition with strikeouts, and he was sixth in ERA. And no doubt, he is a major reason the Jefferson Bobcats have been competitive the last two seasons. Saunders is set again. He winds, and the pitch is a curveball swung on and hit towards third. Oh, what a grab by Myers at third. He throws the first and gets the out by stride. What a play. That ball had third baseline written all over it, Bob, but Myers just smothered the ball with a backhand and fired a strike to first just in time. And you have to give credit to the Jefferson defense for helping Saunders keep this perfect game. And with that in mind, the Wolverines send in Gary Adams to pinch hit for Terry Chatwig. This will be Adams' first plate appearance of the season. Adams is a junior who bats left-handed. Adams is ready and Saunders is ready. Here's the pitch. Popped up behind home plate. Taylor has room. He camps under it and he has it for the second out. And now the crowd is to its feet as the ace right-handed Chris Saunders is only one out away from pitching a perfect game. Saunders, who graduates in June, will be in demand at the collegiate level and maybe even in the minor leagues. There's no doubt about that, Bob. The Wolverines manager is sending in another pinch hitter for the pitcher. This time it will be right-handed Eric Fire to face Chris Saunders, and everyone is on their feet cheering. It's just like when the Bobcats made the playoffs last year, Jerry. All the fans are really into it. And now Saunders is set. Here's the pitch. 
fastball in the corner called for a strike. No doubt Sta Saunders still has his stuff. If he gets this out, Saunders will be only the fourth high school Class A pitcher to get a perfect game in the past 10 years. And what an accomplishment that would be. The pressure is on as Saunders comes set. He shakes off one sign from the catcher. And now he's ready. Here's the pitch by Saunders. It's a fastball and it is hit to right field. It gets through for a base hit. Wait a minute, he's going for second base as Brian charges the ball in right field. He has it. And the throw to second is in time. He's out. The Bobcats win on a spectacular performance by Chris Saunders. You were awesome. Right. You were great. Man. Let's celebrate. Yeah. Party in my house. Yeah. Party in my house. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah. I'm going. Um, you're not going to invite it for a while celebration right. in my house. Right. I'm, I'm happy there. Well, what do you mean you're not going to be there? we got plans. No. plans. I don't think oh. so. Come with me, I'll tell you. No. Don't oh, do it, man. man. <laughs> I got to go, guys. Come on. No. Okay, I'll see, I'll see you in here. Come on, Come on dude. Lose her. Here. Don't forget it, this isn't working. 
I need to get the house cleaned up. The bathroom needs to be cleaned. You let the dog go in the corner and it stinks. And this room is a total disaster area. You're so lazy. I expect me to watch my soap operas when the house looks like this all the time. Do something. By the way, I'm going to be gone this weekend. Where are you going? There you go again. You always want to know where I'm going and when I'm going to get back. So I don't have to tell you and I'm not going to. Uh, you just keep the house clean while I'm gone and make sure you get in enough hours at work. She's got a leash on you so tight, she's choking you to death. Wake up! Huh? Open your eyes. Tammy completely manipulates you. What? You heard me. I didn't take that from you, you low-life drunk. No, you don't. Fact. You don't even have to be here. I don't think I invited you here. Mike, I don't feel too good. I think you can give me a lift home. We just got here and we're not leaving till I'm ready to. I don't think I was talking to you. Well, I can't just leave her here. I would. No, I take that back. I'd take her to a dark alley or a ditch and leave her there. Come on, Dave. How about, how about this? I call your sister and she can give you a ride home. She has a license. That's a good idea. Right. Wish I had thought of that one. Yeah, right. do that. Thank you. It's beautiful. I bet it'll last forever. How's your ankle? It's doing okay. I can't wait till I can get the cast off. I still really feel bad about the accident. I'm sorry. But it wasn't your fault. Besides, we should be celebrating. What should we celebrate? Why, your game. You were awesome. Thanks. I just wish you could have been there. Well, I listened to it on the radio. I think it's even better, because I could hear what the announcers were saying. They thought you were great. What class are you studying for? Oh, intro to computers. Your room looks really nice. Thanks. I really don't like the curtains, though. See, they were in here when we moved, and I haven't been able to get them changed yet. Hello? Oh, hi, Mike. Uh, Dave's not here right now. What? Oh no, is he all right? Okay, thanks, Mike. I'll try to come and get him as soon as I can. Bye. What's wrong? Dave's at Brian's house drunk. I have to try and go pick him up. Don't worry about it. I'll go get him with my car and bring him home. Oh, thanks, Chris. You're the greatest. Hey, Dave. <laughs> Hi, Jen. <laughs> yeah, looks like you had about enough to drink. My uh, dear, the night is still young. <laughs> you definitely had enough to drink. I know when I have enough. When I see you, <laughs> and you look like an elephant. <laughs> Crack another joke like that, and I'll turn into an elephant and stomp on you. No, because I'd be a mouse. <laughs> Yeah, well, where'd Mike go? He went to call my sister. Well, somebody's coming to take you home. Yeah, she never lets me down. Oh, hey, Jenny. Is something wrong, Mike? Oh, no, I'm just thinking about something. Congratulations. You got me. Did you call my sister yet? Yeah, she's on her way. Be right over. Help the bass, dude. It's wild, man. <laughs> but I think I've got to check out in a few. <laughs> you look like you checked out an hour ago. <laughs> uh.
Speak the pizza man. Hold on, grab the back. Oh, please tell me that my eyes were deceiving me. Chris, I never expected to see you here. Chris, you know, I came to pick up Dave. Yeah, Chris isn't man enough to party, you know. Listen, Brian, I don't want to hear it from you. Look, man, I'm sorry, I was out of line. Yeah, you were out of line. Now, why don't you just get Dave and get away from my house? Oh. Hey, where's Sonia? She hurt herself, remember? Yeah, that's that. It's okay. Dave, are you ready to go? Just one more drink. I really wish you wouldn't, man. Why not? Because you're a friend, Dave. I care about your condition, and so does your sister. She loves you a lot. Okay. Well, see you guys. See you at school tomorrow. I doubt you feel like coming to school. Let's see. You. Bye. Later, Mike. Huh? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. See you at school tomorrow. All right. Argued. I'm sick of it. I do not. We do too. We're starting it right now. So what are you trying to say? Well, I think maybe it's time we went our separate ways. What do you mean? We love each other. What? Is fighting love? Is arguing love? Is jealousy love? But we've been going together for six months now. We just can't quit. Look, I'm I'm set on this decision. My feelings aren't the same and I just I just want to be friends. It's me. Go ahead and say it. I'm a worthless person. You're not a worthless person. But Mike, I can't imagine life without you. And now you start treating me like everyone else. That's not true. You know that. Then why are you trying to break up with me? It's like I said before. My feelings aren't the same. I, I just want to be friends. But I can change, Mike. I promise I'll change. Just give me another chance. It'll be different. You've said that before. This is it, Tammy. We're through. Don't do this to me, Mike. I'll probably kill myself without you. Tell me stop. You're serious, aren't you? Yeah. Don't think this doesn't hurt me, too. Hurt you? All you've done is hurt me. I don't need to hear this. Fine, Mike. Have it your way. But someday you want me back, and I won't be there for you because you blew it. I knew you can change. You're always going to be the same. You could have had something really special, Mike. You gave it up, and you'll pay for it, Mike. I swear you'll pay for it. Good morning, Lord. Please come into my life today and offer me guidance throughout the day to be more like you and to show others your, your character. Lord, I pray this morning for Sonia and myself to help our relationship become closer together and help us to become closer to you in the process. I also would like to pray for Brian. Please give me patience in, in dealing with him and let him understand the reasons why I do follow you because I do want to be his friend and I, I hope that he can understand so we can be friends. Please also go into Dave's life and show him that somebody does care because he needs someone to show him that. Finally, I pray for Tammy to, to really give her strength. Her and Mike broke up yesterday and she's really unstable and I feel she needs somebody right now because she has no one to turn to. I pray for all my friends this morning as they all awaken to help them throughout the day and give them strength to carry on. In your name, Amen.
I can't believe it! Never would I do. I asked you last night to iron this shirt and you didn't do it! Just look at me! Now I've got to go to work like this! Don't turn away from me when I'm talking to you! Just look at you! You're a mess! You can't do anything right. I don't know why I ever put up with you. I can't even hold on to a boyfriend. You'd better have this house clean when I come home. I can't believe you cut your hair. I mean, you know, it, I don't know. I guess you did the right thing. I kind of can't believe it myself. They know I had to do something to celebrate you and Tammy breaking up, man. I mean, she was controlling your life, dude. Yeah, I know. I just, it just wasn't as easy as most people think it was. Just think of it, though. Within a couple weeks, you're going to be over her, and you can have the pick of any chick you want, man. <laughs> yeah, right. right. No, I'm serious, man. The girls go for you. I mean, just think how quick you picked up on that Stacy chick, man. I wouldn't mind asking her out. There you go, there you go. Hi, Mike. Am I glad to see you? Oh, Trish, what do you want? I just wanted to let you know that you did the right thing in dumping Tammy. She was having an evil influence on you, and the Bible clearly states Trish, that... Trish, I, I don't have time for this. Man. Well, that's just it, Mike. Now that you've dumped Tammy, you'll have all the time you want for God. Trish, look, you say you didn't have time for this. Why don't you just lay off? Okay, okay. Let's at least I'll try to be friends. I know what. You guys can come over to my house for a Bible study tonight, and we can pray for it. Trish, why don't you go find your dog and give a Bible study to him? But I did that yesterday. <laughs> oh, she's a bowl of laughs, isn't oh, she? Well, go ahead, laugh if you want. But remember, he who laughs first, laughs last. And only the righteous will inherit the kingdom of God. So you can call me when you're ready to apologize. <laughs> Because she's the choice of chicks I had to choose from. I think I'll get back together with Tammy. I don't understand people like her, man. Always trying to push their religion on everybody. Man, why can't she be more like, like Chris? I don't, I don't know. I guess people are different. Let's just be glad Chris isn't like her. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, and I know why, too. Oh, why? Tell me, Trish. Because God is going to use me to bring you to Him. Get off it, Trish. All you ever do is preach at people. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe you're turning them off to Christ instead of on? You know, why can't you be more like Chris? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you so badly. You know, it's all right. Hi, Jim. All right, hang on. Here you go. You know, you could be a well-liked person if you just, you know, understand people's needs. Now, that's what Christ did. He met people's needs first. He didn't condemn and preach to them every time he met them. How'd you know that? No one. That part you said about Jesus. Oh, um, well, I've been studying with Chris a little lately. Really? Yeah, really. Well, look, I'm sorry I blew up at you like I didn't, you know, get mad. That's okay. I probably had it coming to me anyway. Yeah. Well, um, I'll talk to you later. Hey, maybe we can get together and have a Bible study or, or something. Um, I don't think so. See you later. 
saw you talking with the beast today. Yeah, that's up. What, do you like her? <laughs> uh, I just brought it with Tammy. I'm not exactly trying to feel the void so soon. You said it, not me. Well, I always had a crush on Denise. I just, you know, I never went away. Is that why you broke up with Tammy? <laughs> no, you know that. I just, I don't know. I mean, Tammy's manipulating. She's selfish. Using people. And I did love her once, I admit that. But, I don't know. I mean, it, hurt, it did hurt me to break up with her. But it was the right thing to do. But the breakup isn't the only thing you're going to do. Use some help with your shots. Give me a break. I mean, it's his baseball season. So why are we playing basketball? Hey, you're the one that wanted to play hoop, not me. Hey, how do you feel good anyway? Practice, positive attitude, and Christ. What's that like? What's what like? You know, being a Christian. But it's a real cool experience knowing that, that Christ is there for you and that, that he's someone you can rely on. It's, it's really awesome to know him. Yeah, I'd like to learn more about it. Well, that is if you don't mind teaching me. I wouldn't mind at all. And maybe you could help me with my shot, too. <laughs> well, I don't know if it'll help you with basketball, but I'll be around later tonight if you want to talk about it. All right. Just promise you don't bombard me like Trish does. Let's get out of here. Ready for the government test tomorrow? Oh, yeah, real ready. We stayed all three minutes. <laughs> Do you know what all's going to be on it? I don't know. Probably the same stuff as always. Great. Five, six chapters, you know. Hey, Chris, got something here for you. What's this? They're scholarship offers. Your full tuition will be paid no matter what school you play for. All oh, right. <laughs> These are top colleges. The best want the best. I can't believe this. This is great. So, do you have any ideas where you want to go? I'll probably have to look over the offers and see what some of my friends are doing. Okay, but don't think that's all the offers you'll get. There'll be more as the season progresses. Whoa. Thanks a lot, Coach. I appreciate your guidance. Well, thank you, Chris. Can't Can believe you believe this? Man. Whoa. Can't believe you got a scholarship for Stanford. Yeah, I know. I, I'm really excited about it. I just don't know which one to choose. Mike. Yeah, he's going to get time to talk. We could have made it, Mike. Why are you doing this to me? Amy, please don't do this. Please put the gun down. Stay out of this, Chris. This is between Mike and me. No, Tammy, you have to understand. The gun needs to be put away. You can work something out. Chris! Oh, jeez, Chris! Chris, don't die, Chris! What are you done? Chris! Chris! Oh, don't die, Chris! The decision not to play this Friday night is my choice. Just because I'm a Seventh-day Adventist isn't the only reason I'm not going to pitch this game. It's more than being an Adventist, it's my personal relationship with Christ. Do you understand that my 
and you have to understand my position too. I love baseball and I join the team with you and everyone else knowing that I can't play on Friday night or Saturday. is there for you and that, that he's someone you can rely on. It's, it's really awesome to know him. Yeah, I'd like to learn more about it. Well, that is if you don't mind teaching me. I wouldn't mind at all. These are top colleges. The best want the best. No, Tammy, you have to understand. The gun needs to be put away. We can work something out. Chris! Oh, jeez, Chris! Chris, don't die, Chris! What are you doing? Chris! Chris! Tammy pulled a gun out and pointed it at me. I just, I remember, I remember Chris standing between us and trying to talk her out of it. And next thing I knew, he was on the ground, bleeding. I mean, there, there was nothing I could do. Chris, Chris was my best friend, and I mean, <clears throat> he still is. I remember um, a while ago, Chris was saying something about Jesus and how he gave up his life to, so that we could live. I just, I never fully understood that until, until Tuesday. When, when he took the bullet, well, that was meant for me. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm gonna miss you. So y'all know, I always made it seem like I didn't really like Chris. But Chris was really a nice guy, really, deep inside. I wish I could have told him that when he was alive, but now it's too late. I know that you guys are all sad and stuff, and I feel sad about what happened too. Now he's gone, I wish we could have, I wish I could still go back and tell him how I feel. I mean, I didn't really hate him as much as I made it seem like I did. He was really deep inside a real nice guy. And I feel bad now that I can't go back and tell him that. I wish, 
I wish she was still alive so I could tell him that. I guess I was jealous, I don't know. I don't know what it was. But whatever it was, I wish she was still alive so I could tell him that I really didn't mean all the bad things I said about him. I don't know, like he said, maybe in heaven I'll meet him someday. I might just change my mind. And I might just change my lifestyle just for him. Because analyzing everything and stuff, I think that he really was a good guy after all. That's all I have to say today. Chris was, was the one that brought me to Christ. And he was also a dear friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine, a good Christian. It's hard to understand. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm Chris. <laughs> what a guy. Guess I kind of got to know him through my sister. He showed Sonia happiness I never saw experience before. Seems like he always went the extra mile for somebody. I know he did for me. Remember the night of his big game? to that party and had a little bit too much to drink, <laughs> kind of like I always do. Chris came and took me home. He didn't put me down. He didn't condemn me. He cared about me. He accepted me the way I was. I guess, I guess I just want to tell him I'm sorry for, for being such a jerk. And thank him for looking out for me. Just last Saturday night, I got together with Chris because I wanted to ask him some questions about Christ. And I wanted to find out what made him so different than other people. And I realized that it was because he didn't judge people. He didn't judge me. He didn't judge my friends. He was a very caring person. He wanted me to know that. He was always there for me. And that night, I had my first Bible lesson. And the, the verse that we studied was, Greater love has no man than this, that he laid down his life for a friend. And Chris would have done this for anyone. And as he said, Christ did that for us.